the service of the Lord. Amen. Money can buy companion, but not a true friend. Yes. 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 In John 15, 12 to 14, we read, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatever I command you. Our Lord Jesus Christ has summed up the definition of a true friend. Amen. There are not many types of friends, or there are so many types of friends in the world today. Some have been placed in, our, in your life with whom you share the same destiny and some goals. But it takes wisdom and the heart of understanding given by Christ to recognize these saints in your life. Your wife, your husband, your co-worker in the vineyard of the Lord, or one of your children. While Apostle Peter was ready to die for Jesus, Apostle Judas Iscariot was ready to betray his friend and master with 30 pieces of silver. After all, Judas was also Jesus' friend. Yeah. And Jesus said in John 15, 14 to 15, Ye are my friends, if you do whatever I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servants knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I call you my friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Amen. If Christ Jesus has made us his friends, should we then not glory in the Lord, yes. and be thankful for his grace yes. and mercies? Yes. There are too many benefits of being considered as a friend, of the Lord. And the Bible revealed this to us in Exodus 33 11, which reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, for his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man departed not out of the tabernacle. The Bible is here teaching us that if God could speak with Moses as a man speaking to his friend, God can speak also to us Amen. if we make ourselves available Amen. and worthy to be entrusted with responsibilities. Amen. And also in Isaiah 41 9, we read, But thou, O Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. And also in James 2 23, we read, And the scripture was fulfilled. Which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Amen. We also have hope of qualifying to be called friends of God, just like Abraham and Moses, and even God's children, as the Lord assured when the disciples asked him, Master, teach us to pray. He said, Our Father, who art in heaven, he also assured David that Solomon will be his son and he will be a father to Solomon. As we read in 2 Samuel 7, 13 to 15, he shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chastise him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. Amen. 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 Money can buy a crucifix, but not the Savior. Yes. The book of 2 Corinthians 5, 14-17 has opened our eyes to our destiny. If we live in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5, 14 to 17. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. As he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the Yet now we know him in this way no longer. 
Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creator. The old things pass away, the whole new things have come. Hallelujah. So to start to count all the things that God has done, and he is doing in your life, and it's, it's just like resolving to start counting the number of the hair of your head, too numerous and too few than what he is yet to do in your life, if only we could be showing gratitude for his immeasurable masses. The service realized this magnificence of Jehovah God. When he wrote in Psalm 8, 4 to 6, What is man? That thou art mindful of him. And the son of man, that thou visited him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, thou hast put all things under his feet. What is man? That thou art mindful of him. Or the son of man, that thou should visit him. And in Job 7, 17 to 18, we also read, What is man? That thou should magnify him. And that thou should set thy heart upon him. And that thou should visit him every morning. Man, in the pride of his heart, sees no big deal in matters like this for him. I am a superior being and a small God, but a humble soul is filled with astonishment and fear of the omnipotent mighty God. Thus said the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. And with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. Isaiah 57, 15. Oh, say the humble soul, will the Lord have respect unto such a vile worm as I am? Will the Lord acquaint himself with such a sinful wretch as I am? Will the Lord open his arms, his bosom, his heart to me? Shall such a loathsome creature as I am find favor in his eyes? In, the, as in Ezekiel 16, 1-5, we have a glimpse of the wonderful condescension of God to man. Of God even from his throne of grace, still touching our hearts. Condescension meaning to degrade yourself, to bring yourself down to the level of your slave. We are the Lord of the master of the house. But you want to play God, then you come to the level of the slaves. That is what God is doing. We are nothing like a worm, just like a worm. But he has to step down from that throne of glory to come and touch us every morning. That is what we are trying to say. We have a glimpse of the wonderful condescension of God to man. Of God, even from his throne of grace, still touching our hearts. It here resembles a wretched infant, cast out in the day of his birth, in his blood and filthiness, no eye pitying it. Such a lonesome creature are we before God. And yet, when he passed by, and saw us polluted in our blood, he said unto us, Live. It is double blessing because of the strength of this nature. It was the time of love, as Ezekiel says in 168. And this was love indeed, that God should take a filthy, wretched thing and spread his curse over it and cover its nakedness and swear unto it and enter into a covenant with it and make it his. That is, that he should take dominion over everything that he has created. That he will be a husband to it. That is love of fashionable, love inconceivable, self-principled love. This is the love of God to man, for God is love. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh. The depth of the riches of the bounty and goodness of God. 
How is his love wonderful? And his grace past finding out. How do you find and feel your heart affected upon the report of these things? Do you not see a matter of admiration and cause of wonder? Are you not as it were launched forth into an ocean of goodness? Where are you not, or can you not see, where you cannot see the shore or feel the bottom? You may make a judgment of yourselves by the notions and affections that you feel in yourselves at the mention of this. But thus Christ judged of the faith of the centurion. When said unto him, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to them that follow him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. In Matthew 8, 8 10, if then you still do not feel any sense of gratitude, or your soul not mightily affected with this condescension of God, God's magnanimity, say then to unto your soul, what is your affliction? What is your problem? After all this, you still can't know what God is doing for me. Then you have to ask yourself, what is my problem? Mm. Oh my soul, that thou art no more affected with the goodness of God. Are thou dead? That thou cannot feel? Or are thou blind? That thou cannot see thyself compassed about with astonishing goodness? Behold, the King of glory descending from the habitation of His Majesty, and coming to visit thee. Do, do you not hear His voice saying, Open to me, my sister, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Lift up yourselves, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Behold, O my soul, how goodness. He waits still while thou hast refused to open to him. Oh, the wonder of his goodness. Oh, the condescension with me of his love to visit me, to sue unto me, to wait upon me, to be acquainted with me. Take courage to walk up your souls today into the astonishment of the greatness and unlimited ever-flowing mercies of the condescension of God. Give God the glory and adoration due to Him for all He has done and still doing in our lives worthy of thanksgiving. Amen. 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 I wish you all happy Thanksgiving. As you celebrate the Thanksgiving with your families, with your friends during the week, remembering that Jesus Christ sacrificed His own life so that you and I will be saved. Yeah. May God bless you all. Does this one, Lord, we want to come to you with no problem, but simply to say thank you for your forgiveness when we fail, for the sheer joy of sleep when we are terribly tired. Yes. For silent strength of humility when pride overtakes us. For the justice of your laws when people are cruel. For the remedies for sickness when we are ill. For the simplicity or orderliness when we face confusion. For the assurance that you have made a place especially for us when we feel inadequate among our companions. For the joy of helping others when we see people in need. For the utterly evidence of your will when we are trying to find out what life is all about. For the reality of your world when we stray too far into fantasy. For the rightness of reasonableness when we panic too quickly. For the fun that refreshes when everything gets too serious. For the renewal in moments of silence when we are overly stressed. Thank you Lord for all of these things. But most of all Thank you for abiding presence that makes every day we need a day of thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the words that have come to pass.
pass. We glorify God because we know the word of God said, because of lack of wisdom, my people have perished. We thank God for children.